What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Factory Town. Now we're coming straight back to where we left off and that was, hopefully anyway, moving the kitchen. So it makes more sense to me to bring the kitchen to the farms instead of the farms being nowhere near the kitchen and having belts going across the entire city. So bring the kitchen to the farms and then the kitchen will produce the finished product. That finished product can then go straight to the shop to be sold. So here, this back, now of course them trees are in the way so I will very shortly get rid of those. You can see I'm just putting a road in just in case I need to do any, well directly people moving items or carriages, carts, etc. And in doing so, I'm obviously using the stone because it's much, much faster. I am then going to put down a new town centre. Now the new town centre allows us to store our goods to be used at a different area because the one that we currently have that's now surrounded is getting a bit clustered. So it's tidier to, to separate them a little bit to give you a bit more space. You can of course have totally different cities in different places. But for now on the resources that I have we don't need to do that. So behind this farm there is the processing plant. The carrot field of course does need to be replaced. I believe I already mentioned that that will end up being the berries. Simply because the berries get turned into berry juice which is a good upgrade on the coin cost, the, the, the profit that we'll make from it. The carrots, as it stands at the minute, are useless until you do potatoes and another vegetable as well to either make vegetable stew or normal stew with the meat. So the corn is going into bread. That's good. We have bread being made. The bread and then what will be hopefully chicken will then give us chicken sandwiches. All right. Chicken sandwiches and berry juice. That's what we're after. Or at least that's what I'm going to attempt to do first. A lot of scaffolding and manipulating of belts to get goods from A to B or B to C. Or however you want to do it. Here comes the chicken. So the chicken goes into the kitchen and comes out cooked. Of course, nice and simple. We've got the bread coming from the flour that you can see down being made. That goes into the kitchen and makes bread. So we've got chicken sandwiches. That much is almost done. Of course, the output's not set up yet. And with the output, we need to then get them to a central area where we can then get that sent to the general store. Now, I could move the general store, actually. I don't know if I thought about that when I was doing this. We'll see. In the meantime, though... The kitchen needs wood. It is our best setup for the fire that we need to make the bread and, of course, the cooked chicken. Now, I keep calling it as a resource fire. It's not, it's not fire or heat. It's fuel. That's the right word for it. And now it doesn't feel cringe to say it. <clears throat> so, yeah, the wood going into the kitchen there is the fuel. The ch raw chicken and flour that's going in the other side is the ingredients. And then we need to now output from the kitchen the completed products, which, as I say, are cooked chicken and bread. I don't think you can actually make a chicken sandwich as an item in the game. But, I mean, if you've got bread and chicken, someone's going to make a chicken sandwich, right? I mean, if you're not a vegetarian, then who doesn't like a chicken sandwich? After many different variants of moving the pipes and belts and roads around, I've come to this conclusion. Now we just need to get a storage vessel to put them into and then we can get some of the units people to manually take them out. The silo is the best option. It's nice, simple. It's only one square in terms of storage. I'm pretty sure I can make that. So we'll get some silos put down and then we'll get them transferred over into... And off subject, I'm just trying to get the 
completed iron ore plates over to storage so we can turn them into nails. And then we can use those to upgrade the wooden planks to reinforce wooden planks and make some of the good stuff more mid-game then. Very basic setup. The goods go into the silo. The carts take the goods out of the silo, delivering them to the shop to be sold. There is a bit of a chain there, you can see. So if, for any reason, the goods can't go into the silos, they will be recycled back onto the belt. Uh, clogging it up, of course, if it's not one of the two things that fit. Now, I've got one silo for the bread and one silo for the cooked chicken. For now, that works, but there is only two spaces. So if I want to do anything else, I'm going to have to rework this entire area. But we'll get to that when we need to, because there's no point making space or holes in roads when we don't actually know what we need to move about and when. So 10 random people down, just to get the job done a bit more efficiently, they'll fit through and, and back up the, the carts, because the carts will just get clogged up with such small roads. Doing this means that our money, gold, will come in pretty quick. The gold itself being, I think the chicken, the bread is 12, so when you see the 12 pop up, that is the bread being sold. The chicken is eight. Yeah, there you go. So for a chicken sandwich, it's 20 gold coins each. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so the next simple upgrade is to the cloth that's going to the general store. I've broken the line, and then in between, I am going to chuck in the tailors, and then they will be turning the cloth immediately into something else. Now, what I've missed is the tailors doesn't actually turn the cotton into cloth, so I need it to go into... I can't remember what it's called, but the building that... Yeah, so we'll chuck that down there. And then I want it to go into the woodworking factory I think it was called not the lumber mill workshop there we go so the cotton goes into the workshop that turns the cotton into cloth the cloth goes into the tailors and turns them into cloth shirts the cloth shirts then go into the general store and voila we've got a boost in the red coins do you want me to show you that because we already built the, the tailors already so there you can see the cloth comes straight out of the workshop into the tailors. The tailors then turns the cloth into shirts. The shirts go into the store, they're sold, and we get red coins for those. Can't remember off the top of my head how many red coins you get for a cotton shirt. We may see it, there you go, eight. So eight coins. So the same amount of coins as we're getting for the cooked chicken, it would appear. But of course they're red coins, not gold coins. Hopefully using that now, two and a half thousand gold coins. Can we finish off the trees? Remember that the trees are 50 gold each. It's going to be close. Yeah, that's fine. I think there's a gap there, but never mind. 500 gold left, so that's fine. Plenty of wood coming out of there now. Certainly enough to keep us going for the foreseeable future. So as an upgrade, actually, I've got some coal coming in now. The coal is four times more efficient than the wood as a fuel. And it is in itself its own resource that we can pull in from near the, the kitchen. So as you can see, it's coming there from the right of the screen at the bottom. It's a much closer resource than the wood as well. So it's more efficient and it's closer, which means efficiency in terms of speed and delivery times. Not much chicken coming out at the minute. Just ripping up the carrot field, finally, as I've mentioned already, to replace it for the next crop that we're going to be growing, which is berries. Uh, I think they just called berries, right? Yeah, berries. They look like purple grapes. I'm not sure. But they turn directly into berry juice. So berry juice and chicken sandwich, as I mentioned. And this is how we're doing it. And then the only other farm left is the cotton farm. Of course, that's required for uh, keeping the villagers going. But we're going to need a lot more farms in the future. 
and below here right at the bottom of the screen where you can see that forest that's where we can do another at least three farms that can connect directly to the kitchen as well nice and easily so there is a bit of logistics to sort out with this additional berry field um, as you can see I've got the the, the belt coming out of it now unfortunately the actual process here is that yes you can see I now need to rip out this cotton because I need a third silo so I can move the belt over one for now that's not too difficult then extend what I've already done which is another silo then a belt sideways so we'll have to turn that center belt in the pushers automatically then take the right goods off the belt simply because the the silo can only hold one thing anyway and then again, just bring it straight back round so it can return. And obviously, if that starts to happen, like so, it will clog it up and alert me to the situation. As long as I keep the silos emptied, there shouldn't be an issue. The third one is going to be for berry juice. Just chucked in a third ranch there. Is it a ranch? Mm, pasture, sorry, pasture. Uh, that is for cows, or at least that is for milk. Not sure yet what I'm going to use the milk for. Whether I turn milk into butter or something else, cheese. Not sure. For now, though, we'll say you can have a glass of milk or berry juice with your chicken sandwich. Right. It's very, very uh, specific what you can have to eat or drink in this village for now. But we are obviously going to do it slowly. At some point, it will, of course, have a massive selection. And I'll be ripping down all of these fields and rebuilding them in a much more structured pattern. Probably sort of five fields together to work. Just adding in some more of the wells as well. That was hard to say. Uh, because the water was running out. <clears throat> so that's three more wells shut down. I think I'm using nine in total now. Mm, not sure. There you can see the berries, and then on the output of the kitchen, you now have, I saw that just then, there you go, cooked chicken, bread, and berry juice. Now, I need to be careful that the export there is working correctly, so that everything that is being created is getting exported equally. I don't want to just get loads of bread and chicken and then no drinks or vice versa, so just looking over the main area of town where the houses are just to see what is indeed happening uh, you can see some of the houses are upgrading that's good to see there is still some ones coming in I'm not sure what them one gold coins are coming from actually that oh that's the water that's fine um so with the gold coming in from there and then the two foods as well and the, the juices we do see a nice constant incline of goods research as well 3800 stored we need to research iron rails and iron wheels to get to the next research level of five and we still need about 74 happiness to increase our population count again uh, currently we actually can build another six houses whether i do that in the same town or whether i try and do a settle a second one we'll have to wait and see uh, actually, it's just gone up again. Now we can build another 10 houses. So the next step is trying to figure out the logistics of getting the milk to wherever it is I want to take it, which realistically is the kitchen. Of course, at this stage, it starts to give you a good idea or a good indication on what you're actually building and what you need and how it needs to be. So... I would imagine coming up in a episode or two, this will all be ripped down and then rebuilt with the infrastructure in mind so that it's a much neater, better process. Or if I can get some upgraded belts so they move quicker so that I can share a belt. The problem is, though, a lot of the resources that you do, as you can see with the fertilizer that is right there on the screen now, is you get it backed up. And if a, if a line is backed up, it doesn't matter how fast it is, the other resources can't use that line. So when shearing lines, it's always a good idea to have a way of taking the excess off. 
Because like now, if we have too much chicken or too much milk, the other one will suffer. It's ugly, but unfortunately it's essential to get these goods out and up. I may just move all of the pastures elsewhere and leave the farms where they are. At least then I don't have to do these really abrupt, steep uh, ramps, which do make things look quite minging IMO. But there we go. Milk is on the belt now, along with the chicken. I'm not entirely sure how it depicts who is priority or if it's just random. Straight in to the kitchen though, and the milk can be used for butter or cheese, but cheese requires cloth. Butter requires nothing but, okay, it looks like I'm going for cheese. Yes, yeah, so now we just need to get cloth over to the kitchen. But again, as I mentioned earlier, you can see we have a backup. Now, is this backup due to the carts or the belt? I think it's gonna be the carts. It looks like they've got stuck or at the very least discombobulated as to where they're supposed to go. Them then blocking up means that the silos have likely filled and of course then everything's just broken. So to fix that, I'm not sure yet. The carts are good for moving, good for moving goods. There we go, I said it. But they are really, their AI is really poor. Now using this splitter here means that I can tell these to share. So there you go. It's gonna force one left, one right. <clears throat> Actually, it will also go head on as well. So all three directions you can see there. So it would send one right, forward, left, right, forward, left, right, forward, left. Over and over again. <clears throat> as it stands, we only need left and right. The ones on the right are going in there, turned into cloth. The cloth then goes into the kitchen. We can then make cheese as well. Though as it looks like the setup I've got we are over this, this belt's far too busy now so having bread chicken cheese and juice on one line is not going to work unless we can combine them into one item which I'm pretty sure this sandwich is an option that we're working towards that then would be a much cleaner conveyor belt so I've unstuck the wagons uh, I'll be honest, deleting them and resetting is easier than trying to figure out who's going where and who needs to go first or second. So that is what I have done. At the minute you can see bread and chicken coming out. There is no juice, uh, berry juice. Of course the belts are quite busy, but it looks like we need an additional belt in order to get these goods to move more consistently and obviously more realistically into what we need. Chuck it in a wrap here. This is for that same belt. I'm gonna raise it up so I can take one underneath it, I believe. Like that. So now you can see the cloth goes under there. I actually need to build it in a bit better. Looks like I've missed a spot. I'm not sure if it's getting caught on the wood actually. It could be. There is a height limit to a lot of the things, hopefully. That's not the issue. No, there's a belt missing under there, look. So if I put that belt in, they should be then able to link. And there we go. So we've now got the cloth going in as well, which means cloth plus milk equals cheese. Yep, and there we have cheese. So can we turn that into a singular unit meaning that we're exporting only one thing at a time as opposed to multiple things so turning off the extraction there because obviously these cheese triangles that are on the belt are going to clog everything up because we have no solution for those as yet and there we go progress so i have turned on the sandwich now the sandwich is one cheese one chicken and one bread to make a chicken and cheese sandwich Sounds delicious. I don't think I've ever tried that, but there they are. So they're coming out on the belt now. So now what we'll have coming down on the belt is a chicken, a cheesy chicken sandwich and the juice, which should hopefully uh, be easily manageable with this belt system. Because we're now putting two things onto it instead of four. 
three silos, which one of them can be canned, actually. We don't need it anymore. We just need to make sure that all of the goods that we did originally have are emptied out first. There we go. I think that is a successful episode going down now to an actual proper meal, which is a cheesy chicken sandwich and a glass of juice for everyone. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe for more. Take care. Goodbye.